results in Guernsey. So we'll just start with um, I'll just start by zooming in if it'll let me. This is Google Maps. This is St. Peter Port here. Been there a few, a few times on some Guernsey trips. So the first spot I've got here is you park up in this car park here. And you walk, I believe, and fish off this wall here. The different bits and pieces. You can fish for mullet inside the harbour here, around here using sort of float like freshwater tactics, fishing like bread or um, strips of um, steak and things like that for garfish and mullet and things like that in there. If you want to fish on the on there, um, obviously you don't want too much wind, but there's a, there's a it's called white rock because of this calf here or something. Um, so yeah, you can park in there. I think the parking is, um, at the end of the car park, it might be free for up to 10 hours, I'm not sure. Um, so as for fish, you're looking at, um, off here, you're looking at pollock, garfish, mackerel, black bream, dogfish, wrasse, conger, place, and a few others. With the place, I think you're looking for patches of sand and a, a gentle retrieve, because um, a lot of crabs will bullet the worm bait. Um, you can float fish. Uh, it's popular from the um, uh, for pollock, garfish and mackerel. Using stuff like that, using sand eel bait for pollock, and um, you can spin for pollock as well. Maybe the mackerel and garfish too. And if you're bottom fishing, you'll you know you'll pick up the other bits and pieces. So there, there's a sort of a if you're there on holiday and you know, you ain't got the money to go on a charter boat or something like that. You can just do, you know, just what a few hours messing around somewhere like that would be good. So that's, that's one spot I've got. St. Peter's Port. The other one I have is, like I say, you can pick up a, a mullet anywhere in here using freshwater tactics. Another spot is a model yacht pond just in here. Um, some good parking here. If you want to do some night fishing, you can park up and you sit in your car and all that sort of stuff. But this slipway here is going to be quite good. Fishing off this slipway into this sort of area. Night time, you pick up a conger. Um, I'm just trying to find what... Um, so, yeah, again, fishing in there. Smallish sort of hooks, worm baits, looking for place, sole, red mullet. Um, it's quite a lot of pouch there, apparently. So with pouch, you get the congers. So at night time, if you want to go for a, you know, try and get a 20 pound conger eel or something like that. If you want a bigger one, you've got to go on the outer pier, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, like I say, there's lots of crabs around there, so you've got to um, gently retrieve your worm baits in um, to pick up the old flatfish. Um, so that's that. Lovely part of the world here. Just trying to think, there's another bay in here Havlet, it's called. Now you can park in your car here and you can fish off here. We'll go into that in more detail, but I was just looking, see this area here, you could park here and you could lob it out in some over sand in some deeper water. But you want to watch the um, the sand in here because obviously different times of the year that will change. So you might find these rocks will be in this area as well. So you be mindful of that, but it's always handy to, if you can get a bit deeper water. Um, what else is there? Right, let's just... So, yeah, it's, you can fly to Guernsey, you can catch the ferry. Um, there's all sorts. Right, so... Yeah, um, so, like I say, parking, parking around here somewhere and walking up. Bit of a walk, but you can walk up to this pier here. Um, and it's called the St. Peter Port Breakwater Castle Pier. Um, the end of the pier, night time, just dropping it down with sort of a mackerel bait, mackerel flapper sort of bait. You're looking to pick up a conger. 20 pounders are common. You might, you might get a 40 pounder if you're lucky. Um, 
but um, yeah, it's, um, it's a good good spot. And again, anything can pretty much turn to deep water venue. So you're looking, you know, you smaller hooks, black bream, red mullet, mackerel, garfish, things like that. Um, what else would be there? Um, yeah, like say the congas. Um, yeah, they like you say it's like it's, it's probably quite tricky to sort of um, to turn up and spec to do quite well. It might take you food trips just to get a feel for what works best. You know, um, high tide, low water. Um, you know, but there's always somewhere you can get out of the way if the wind's blowing. You know, you you can sort of get one side or the other or this sort of um, this T piece here. You can sort of to get out of the way of the current as well. Um, so, yeah, but it's saying red mullet can be found with very short casts, um, big worm baits, garfish found all around the end of the structure. So, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's plenty of spots just around St. Peterport, really. So then there's the Castle Cornet Rocks, which are just down here. So if you don't want to go out of the pier, you want to fish off these rocks. Access, I think you literally just meander around the sort of the, the castle wall, really, around, around here. Yeah, sorry about that. Just zoomed in at a crazy speed. So let's just, this is what we got. Um, so, yeah, talking about black bream, ras, garfish, grey mullets, and conga. So, um, the mullet, you know, you're looking for sort of float fishing tactics, fishing on, but fishing. Um, Maybe sort of worm bait or little bits of fish, little bits of steak, bread, cheese paste, things like that. Smallish sort of hooks. Um, use like your typical coarse fish sort of gear, conga heavier sort of gear, um, rotten bottom sort of gear for conga with like a whole pout. Get some live pouts if you can. Float fishing for garfish, float fishing for wrasse, lug worm under a float. Black brain, probably some small hooks with little bits of fish. Um, so there's a few spots just on the on on the on these rocks around here. Uh, this side's quite exposed, depending on what, what the wind's doing. But yeah, this would be quite good rass fishing around here. I'd say you know that's good at doing zooming in at 100 mile an hour. Um, yeah. So like I say, it's, I'll just um, so there's a few different spots you can try. Um, starting from the southwest, all right. So we're looking at this area here, I believe, um, facing the bathing pools and along the south side to the south east corner. Fish on the bottom of those bottom dwelling species and floats out with the garfish and grey mullet, which you can attract with shirley or burley, whatever you want to call it. And here's the pools here they're talking about. So float fishing that side. So it'll all be very similar, really. It's really sort of getting out of the wind, and depending on what you want to go for. Um, yeah, that's quite a good spot. So yeah, this is that Hablet, Hablet Bay um, spot. Hablet Bay. So it's a beach. Um, popular with swimmers and small sailing boats in the summer. So it strikes me as a nighttime venue, really. But if you just want to have a mess around for a few hours, you're not really that, that bothered. But garfish, bass, grey mullet, rass in some place. Like I say, it strikes me as a sort of a, um, a night time. Um, numerous marks around the bay. Fish from the high wall, north with float gear. So you park your car in here. Your way along there. All these areas around here, they're all going to be sort of you know, places you can try. Well, it might pay just to have a little walk, have a little walk along. And um, see if you can see some fish. So you can see some mackerel. So you can see some mullet. So you can see them. You know, don't just dive in straight away and think, oh, I'll just give it a go there. What you want to do, you want to sort of, you want to probably look at this guide and just just go and have a look, have a look round and see what you can see. Especially with the mullet, there's some quite big ones there, and you should be able to sight them. Um, I know this this these bathing pools here was a spot. Um, all the way along around here, but you can actually stand on this bathing pool and you can spin for bass off there. 
was quite good you know for your feet and all that you know so certain times that's your first light it's getting dusk um, certain times of the tide you might want to go along there so you can pick up a bass in autumn or spring Guernsey's actually littered with different places another area here Clarence Battery there where you fish down and you can um, you can surf cast at low tide you get cut off here so you've got to be a little bit careful of the tide there but you with a, with a surf cast and rod and a tripod you can fish in the sand here I'm just trying to find out what it says about it what does it say what does it say Uh, good mark for black bream, red mullet, and occasional trigger fish. But you can also catch place, sole, grey mullet, garfish, and pollock. Most fishing is done from the side of the large rock outcrop, casting to the south, which is in here. Large rock outcrop, which would be this one here, probably. Um, the bottom is sand, except very close in. It says here you must get off the rocks before half tide. Or you'll be cut off. You cannot stay on the rocks over high water other than those directly below the little pillbox, which is this thing here. So relatively easy access. So you park on the road somewhere, park up here. See where you can park. You end up probably walking round down here. Oh, here you go. You can park here, look. Right by the um, the bathing pool. Park there. Walk across. And just meander your way down to this point here. You must be able to crawl down around this area low water you can probably get on this rock here if you've got a good surf casting rod you might be able to sort of cast from oh, I don't know it's probably quite a bit, good bit of distance there 15 20 meters yeah so you want to try and get your bait on this sort of patch of ground here you see be a flatfish there's some it's very snaggy there there's some good snorkeling along here Yeah, so that's that one. Um, what else is there? One here. Yeah, for main beach is one. What's it say about for main beach? For main bay. For main bay. Right, so. Bass, they're talking about bass, place, red mullet and bream, done over most of the bay. Uh, some rocks, but the bottom's probably sand, so it should be okay to fish nice and light. So, yeah, so you know, there's you know, rocks you can try. This sandy area here, if you want a bit more depth and more fish baits, you can fish in here. Cast so far, you can fish off the beach if you've got a decent surf caster. Yeah, there's all sorts of things you can try there. Um, yeah, it's quite an interesting spot. So, there's another spot, Bex du Nez, it's called Bex du Nez. There's a rock, and I think it's either this one there. Or it's this one. They all fish quite the same. There's some moorings in there, boat moorings in there. Um, this is another spot as well, Marble Bay in there. So they're all quite similar. Um, do, do, do. Talks about wrasse, talks about conger. Uh, it can be great for grey mullet as they shoal into the corner below the stone wall feeding on the weed and debris blown to, into the bay. Yeah, it strikes me as this one. Uh, second mark from the rocks to the east of the platform. These can be assessed from the southeast grass verge and climb over the top. Fish close in for wrasse or cast to the sand for other species. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks like one, doesn't it? Talking about burley. Yeah. 
black brain close in on a neat tide. Yeah. So there's plenty of options. Marble Bay is another one. It's probably quite similar. So. Marble Bay. So what we want marble. Let's have a little click on that. What's it show there? Marble Bay. Which of those? It's almost like you could sort of go with a spinning rod and just sort of have a bit of bait with you in a um, you know in a small sort of um, um, what do they call it? Sort of a frozen bait bag. You know what I'm saying? They keep it refrigerated. They put a little cool unit in there, and so that, you know when it's warmer, your bait don't deteriorate if you're going to fish sand eels and things like that, or your worm and stuff like that. But um, there's another angle of it. Let's see what it is. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, very beautiful. Um, yeah, so again, black brain, triggerfish, red mullet, ras, grey mullet, conga, and others. So, yeah, very interesting. Right, there's another one here. This car park down there, Jerbor Kiosk, Reet de Jerborg. If you park in there, you walk down here, and you either fish off this one, I think it's this one, there's another mark here. There's marks all the way around, really, if you do some rass fishing and stuff like that. And you basically, um, black bream, trigger fish. Um, so you want to fish with them on, on the bottom. You want patches of sand, so I can see some sand here. There might be a bit of sand here as well. But um, rass, grey mullet, conger, mackerel and garfish, so cast in the general direction of Herm and Sark on the bottom, float fishing for garfish, so you float fish for rats and garfish around here. Pollock, spin off it. Um, you will be fishing out this way um, on the bottom. So yeah, it's um, you're gonna, it looks like you'd lose a bit of gear there if you're fishing on the bottom. But there you go, you've got to be in it to win it. So yeah, so St Martin's Point, which I think is another spot on the end, right on the end. Again, off this area here. Um, doesn't mention tides, um, but usually incoming tides for sort of your mackerel, your pollock and things like that. Talk about high water for conger off the piers up that end. So generally an incoming tide, I would say. Bits and pieces. So again, off 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 this area, here, St Martin's Point. You're looking. Um, it says it says the rocks the east of the um, um, the signal station. The east. So it's here. You talk about fishing off this area here. For your mackerel, your garfish, your bass, your black bream, your congers, all that sort of stuff. It's quite deep just then, you know. Spot there just to, just to zoom out so you can get a feel for where it all is. It's this southern, just south of St. Peter's Port, it's a stretch along here. Probably going to break this video up into sort of one, two, three, four bites because it's, um, there's, there's lots of you know different places you can fish. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, whether I can get them all or not, we'll see. But right, so let's just. Um, Look for this other spot. Um, it's called. Let me just type it in. It's called. If I get rid of that. Oh God, it's doing it again. That sorry about that. Just, just trying to trying to find stuff. Pick tit port. It's called. Pick it port. Clumsy. Oh, that looks nice. Where is it? So it's just north of um, the area where we just were. So it's saying skip off all that. It's probably a bit too difficult here and steep. You know, at the end of the day, you know, there's lots of places you can go for like comfort and stuff. So there's no real point sort of going too crazy with it. So we'll just click on that. So this is it. This is the spot. 
So it's beach fishing. It's into beach fishing there. So if you could get to a spot like this when you've got an onshore wind and it's really churned up, that's going to improve your chances. So a lot of these bays, they look at picture postcard just here, but and you probably won't be they will probably won't be very good fishing on a day like that. But if you fish there in like springtime when there's a real stiff and um, probably a southerly wind for that beach there, that would probably be really good for bass which, to lug worm baits, things like that. But over there, sand eel might be the best bait, just a, ledge, a frozen ledged sand eel rolling around in the surf. Or spinners, put some waders on, wade out a little bit in the surf here, just keep chucking your surf sleeper out for bass. That would probably be a really good spot. Um, and that's obviously how you get down it, like that. Beautiful. It's quite shallow though, shallow and sandy. So yeah, so that's that one. So anyway, just just a recap on fish species for that one. Um, it's talking about bass in place. Yeah, bass in place. So yes, but you want you want a bit of a you want a bit of a wind. You want a bit of a um, you want a bit of a southwest wind to blow in there and churn it all up for that to be good. So yeah. Okay, let's see, let's see what else we've got. There's another one. There's a lot of um, French names here. I'm, I was never very good at French at school. This one's called Moulin Hoot. Moulin Hoot. It's a bit like Lily Van Stuck. Um, so yeah, it's just, 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 it's just St. Peter's Port. So it's just another one. Uh, yeah, it's just here. This little bay in here looks a bit weird, and again, it's a bit, hmm, a bit shallow. Again, you want a sort of a surf running, I'd say. But what's it going to say for, for fishing information? Bass, bass. Again, you need you, you don't want it all crystal clear like that and turquoisey blue for a bass. You want it all churned up, not unfishable churned up. You want a bit of a swell on. Um, whether you can, you know, you can stand on these horrible rocks. Get anywhere comfy. I'm not sure how high it is. What is what's it show on here? This area here is very dark. What's all that about then? Uh, really show a lot. Yeah, high water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whether it's an incoming tide and you're just sort of standing on these rocks here and you're casting out in this sort of area, but you really want it. You want you want you want a bit of a swell in there for a bass for an old bass. But there's probably a lot better places to fish for bass on the island than there. You wouldn't want to drive from one end of the island to, to, to go there. There'd be a lot better places than there. There might not. But um, Saints Bay is another one. Saints Bay. Saints Bay. Saints Bay, yeah, that's Saints Bay again. Zoom out a bit. Let's see where it is. Yeah, just 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 another, just another sort of bay. There's literally hundreds of them on this on this um, on this island. Bass. All right. So Warren says, says, don't fish this mark during the summer months and the days. It is very popular with sunbathers. Right, but these beaches, they might be good at night. Might be good at night for a bass, and I'd be if I was fishing. Someone said to me, "How would I tackle? You know, in spring or autumn, how would I tackle and getting a bass from this beach here?" I would. Um, I'd have a bucket, a live live uh, well bucket. I'd have live sand eel, and I would ledger live sand eel in the dark for them. That's how I'd approach these beaches along here. This one here as well. Definitely. That's how I'd approach it. Um, See the thing is, is a lot of these, a lot of these places are really heavy. So let's just sort of see what else we've got. I'm just chucking another one in there. Another French name, Lee Goofy. Goofy. It's just going to take us in. Christ, just taking us in land. Le Goofy. 
the goofy. That's how that's how my French goes. I call it. I just try and put it in English term. The goofy. It shows my mentality, don't it? Um. So yeah, I mean that looks like a rock mark to me. Let's have a look here. Bass, Rass and Pollock, so I know it's going to be a rock mark. Yeah, rock. Walk is the road by which leads to the mark was closed, only as you go for safety. Mm. Yeah. You can fish from the rocks behind the fort Perez, or from the rocks past the small slip was safe of the fairy ring. The rocks here extend to low tide and have been Huge kelp beds at the end of them, ideal for rash and pollock with heavier with heavier tackle. Fucking hell. So you're talking about hooking up with a decent rash and it's gonna dive in the kelp. And you're gonna you need some quite heavy gear to get them out, but yeah, so this used to be closed off at some point because it's quite it's quite risky. So yeah, it's um fish from the rocks behind the fort. Where's the bloody fort then? Where's the fucking fort? I don't know. I don't know. It looks quite deep though, don't it? This area here looks quite interesting. You talk about remoteness and not getting fished very much, an area like that on the sand there. Fucking hell. And here as well. Yeah. Okay. We really are sport for choice here. Um, I'm actually missing off a few spots, but they all look quite similar anyway. Um, Fort Grey. There's actually um, some quite good um, foraging for different bits and pieces along this this island. But remember, if you're moving rocks and things, make sure you put them back how they were. Um, Fort Grey here. What have we got? Bass, pollock, garfish, mullet, grey mullet, an occasional place from low water. How to fish? Fish from the rocks to the back of the fort. Spinning gear for pollock and bass at high water. You can also fish baits onto the sand or try for a grey mullet, of which there are normally several around. You can also fish from the sand behind the fort at low water. The chance of a place. So you're talking about this fort here. You're talking about fishing for a place. Fucking hell, are you trying to tell me that's not snaggy out there? Sand here and here. Yeah, well, it's got to be easier places than that. Like I say, it's a place of sort of Getting familiar with sort of um, so let's just have a look on the island, see where that is. Yeah, I missed off a spot. There's a spot, see, there's the, we come around this way. There's not a lot of spots along here, but there's a spot just um, Fort Pit, this one here, Perry. I missed that one off. Let's just have a look. Fort Perry is this is Fort Perry. Right, it says bass, rass, and pollock. You can fish from the rocks behind Fort Perez or from the rocks past a small slipway south of the ferry. Oh, was it, was it? Fort Perez, I don't think we captured that one very well, if we done it. There we go. Fish from the rocks behind the fort. It's around here. You can I do it for rass and pollock with heavier tackle. So rash and pollock, heavier tackle. Mm. Okay. Let's have a road around here. Yeah, look at this one. Boat smooth up here. Look. Might be some lugworm digging around here as well. So that's what we've got here. Fort Grey. Fort Grey. Fort Grey is right there.
slipway near Saline Road. Let's just type that in. There's so many places, it's like it's a juggle between sort of boring you to death. And do you know what I'm saying? They're all, I mean, you only got to drive around, and just have a look, and you know, you think, oh, that might be suitable to fish for a wrasse or a, you know, a bass or whatever. You literally, you know, you haven't really got to pay too much attention to the guide, really. You know, there's all quite good access, you just tell by looking at it, you know. Um, Yeah, it's um, where are we? Saint Ines Road, um, slipway near opposite. Um, just trying to find a few places. Let's try this. Roots, roots, the C O U D R E. Oh, right. here it is. Oh, we're right back to there. That's not good. Oh, battery near Sun Road, uh, Le Erie near Waterpipe. I'm struggling, mate. I'm struggling to find some places quick enough. Le Erie. Oh, there it is. Le Erie Beach. It's right up here. It mentions a waterpipe. Bass. You can either fish close in or cast towards the rock formation in the distance. Take a look at low tide. Worm baits work well here due to a large population of lugworm, but live sand deal. Fish on light gear or a fly rod with sand deal imitation are deadly. Okay. Okay. This looks quite a good spot. Parking. More parking. Parking at the top. Lugworm here. Lugworm and crab collecting. So it looks like this is sort of your territory for sort of your, your, your oh, bass. Your bass country here, boys. This whole area, look. Quite sunny there. It's not a bad little spot, not really. Like you say, it's all it's just getting much like for like, isn't it, really? Yeah, shingle bank. Let's see if we can find you somewhere else. Not too much longer. All there. Let's try again. Yeah, let's try this one. Yeah, we've gone back to this area again. Where's Andre? It's really just uh, a bit of sea defences going on there. Look. So we get some pretty stormy seas from time to time, I'd imagine. Bassy, Shirley Bassy. Right, I'll just, I'll just 
just one of them. We're getting there, we're getting there. Guys on left battery. Guys on north, Fort Homet. Let's have a look there. What's that say at Fort Homet? Fort Homet. For home, but very similar. Yeah, so what's it saying at Fort Home then? What's it saying? What's it saying? Rock mark, yeah. Car park is busy. Mm. Place Pollock, Rass, Grey, Mullet and Bass. The bottom is rock and the weed close in break to sand at about 40 yards. Best to fish onto the sand with bottom gear or plug and spin for bass. Yeah, this is sand, just here look. This is sand. The old bass. The pollock as well. Can't see anything there. So it's all very. I'm not going to. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to rattle through it a bit because a lot of it is sort of lime rock. What's it say there? Bass place and souls. Yeah, let's just type in lime rock. Oh, we got it, but this one there. Let me zoom in on this. Lions Rock, just there. So you park here somewhere, walk out to this point here. Bass Place and Soul. So if you want a place and a soul, you'll get on the sand out around this way. And obviously, bass as well, incoming tide. So these rocks are quite high here. So as the tide comes up, you're not going to get cut off too much. I want to afford that clamber back there. So might be a fish, might be a good, good good spot sort of off these needles as well if you can. It's the sand. Kobo rocks, Kobo Bay, opposite car park. These rocks here. What's that gonna say there? What's it gonna say? Bass and grey mullet plus the, the normal rockies. Cast into sand bay. Using a large bait, keep the tactics simple as bass can be very wary. If fishing for mullet, light tactics required with freshwater floats and bread for bait. Right, venue there. Like you say, you might just want to have a drive around and just not with the intention of not doing any fishing and just scoping out where you can get some bait from, what looks good, see if you can see any fish. But yeah, you know, you'd need quite a lot of time to, to, um, to you know. I think even locals wouldn't have fished all these marks, you know. Um, it really is not a big island. Um, I'm just trying to sort of um, I miss. I'm actually missing off quite a lot of spots here. I've actually got I've got seventy seven listed on here. I'm just trying to get around the island to sort of see if something's going to change something. I know we're on the northern island. They um, has taken me back to there. It's taken me back to where I didn't want to go. It's not the place name sound the same. Try that. That's the spot I was after. Yeah, I'm going to get around there a bit. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move around now because they, they all seem very similar all the way around the top there. I'm going to try and get to an area. Yeah, um, this northern bit, uh, this bit, this area here, I think that's where. This headland here, Fort Lemark Chant, or wherever it is, I think that's where they, you get some big bull huss at night and stuff like that. So that's another, this St Petersport just here. I think, I think 
this area around the top there is um, to try and look for is where they do bigger conger at night. Um, Fort Lim March, there's that's what I want to look at this one. Pollock Rass Black Brain. Zoom in. Park in here, Pollock, Bass and Black Brain. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Oops, that was a fort, there's about the fort look. Huh. Isn't it lovely? So if you if you want to do a little bit of fishing, a lot of history and stuff, and you like all that sort of thing, you can lose yourself looking at this stuff. Definitely. I've been I've been to Guernsey probably once once for a week, no no fishing. And then uh, all the other times I've been, one, two, three, maybe four times charter boat fishing, we did wreck fishing off um out there, out, right out in the deep. Um, bank fishing out here, wreck fishing. This area here, see that deep trough there? That's the herd deep, I think that's the herd deep. Anyway, that deep trough there. Wreck fishing in there, sand bank fishing around there. We had cod up to 36 pounds in there. Turb up to 14 pounds. Yeah. And come, we were fished here, Salcom. We travel across from Salcom, that's a nice little port that is. Anyway, so I'm just trying to. Yeah, if you're not fishing for conger, you could run into a ball house or something like that. It's literally, I can tell by just looking at the island. There's a nice little marina here. You might get some mullet and nice mullet in there. Let's just click on this look. This one looks beautiful. Yeah. Like I say, there's a lot of. Um, um, like lobsters to, to collect at low water and um, shellfish, things like that. Um, Tax Haven, Fort Doyle, what does it say that old Fort Doyle? Fort Doyle, where are you? Garfish, mackerel, place, pollock, bream, grey mullet, and a few others on bottom gear. Spinning can be very effective, but it's often too busy with floats to do this. Ooh. So it's very popular. Very popular. Let's just zoom in. Float fishing. So you're going to get a lot of people parking there and fishing for bits and, bits and pieces. Probably get mullet in here. This would be quite a good little place to go for mullet in here. This marina. And the rocks out the front look would be good for a rass. Messing around. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Float fishing off there. Probably sea air. But this one's a bit choppy look. Churned up quite deep. And the sea's smashing into it. Jail look. And the rust look. You can see it rusted all the all the eye beams. Someone's lit a firework look. Yeah, you won't be fishing in that. Steps. House, right, sea farms, Guernsey sea farms, oh yeah, yeah, what's in there, There's salmon in there, have they, trout, I'm just going to have something in there, There's some deep in there, yeah, so like I say, um, yeah, all these little areas around here, mullet, these, these, this area here, look, let's see what this says about this one. 
fishing on this arm here out there look again you know if you you know you're trying to get out of the wind half the time depending on what you're going for you know it's literally you know there's this like i say there's 77 um spots i've got labeled up here rocks behind aquastar i think aquastar was the boat builder since samson's harbor let's type that in it is in Samson's Harbour. Aquastar boats were built here. Samson Marina. So it's around here. What do they say there then? Oh god now what? Up here. Commercial harbour. Fishing is prohibited inside St. Samson's Harbour. A sign should remind you. So the signs there. Rass, pollock, bass, and occasional play scarfish, flounder rarely. Fishing can be done most states of the tide where there is water available. Bottom fishing is the most productive, but the rocks just outside the harbour can be used as a platform to plug for bass. Need some rocks here, look. Not sure you can get in here, this area here, but it looks like you could walk across. End of the day, you know, it's gonna be quite difficult walking across, so you need an access track. But there you go. There's the road. So there's a little lake in there. I think there might be a little bit of freshwater fishing on getting um, in Guernsey. I'm sure there is. Um, but some excellent mullet fishing to be had in these sort of areas. The bass fishing is first rate. And you've got your mackerel, conger fishing, rass fishing is good here too. And then you've got your red mullets, you've got your place, all your flatfish. Um, you probably pick up one or two turbot and brill as well in these sort of areas. Again, sort of, you know, live baiting with a sand eel could pick you up all sorts at night time off these sandy beaches really could but there you go that's my that's my guernsey fishing guide um there's a few marks there and bits of information to get you started if you went there for a week you'd never get around all of them um if you if you're going all the way over there i would recommend at least one or two days on a charter boat um fishing the sandbanks off here um or the wrecks for some big fish at least do that for a couple of days and fly in you can catch the Portsmouth ferry doesn't take long you could go to France from here as well if you want to have a go to France for the day um, like I say that a lot of the fishing around here around this area here is um, is very similar but again, you will go try and find some good tides. But you could have a, a real good fun there. It'd be nice in the summertime when the weather's nice. Um, yeah, you might even get bass quite late in the year here with the water's a bit warmer. Not sure. But yeah, there you go, guys. This that's the Guern the Guernsey one. Like I say, like there are seventy seven different spots you can see fish from on there i've probably gone through to about 30 of them and i've missed out massive amounts in this area here um and this area here solely because it sort of paints a picture that it's you know it is quite similar do you know what i'm saying but i'll be brutally honest if you haven't got a lot of time and you want to go somewhere and put you right on the button my recommendation would be Especially when it's nice and hot in July, you get a nice cold can of Coke. Right, grab your spinning rod or whatever, little tackle box, and you want to park up in here. You want to walk right to the end, bring a deck chair. You want to fish off this area here, for different bits and pieces. Watch all the boats come by. Lovely hot sunny day, all the ferries coming in and out. Fishing off there, you do get some pollock and. Um, yeah, all sorts of bream. Yeah, that'd be my choice. Go in there. Be careful. 
Yeah, it's been a while since I've had a Guernsey, but the nightlife is pretty good. The pubs in here, there's some good, there's some good accommodation. There's some good. There's high street along here. Duke of Normandy. No, where did we go? There's a bar called the Library, and it's very, very nice buildings. They've got lovely bars in here. That really, really is a top, top, top venue. That really is. That's lovely all around there. And the boats as well. If you like looking at boats around these marinas, there's some gorgeous boats in there. Absolutely gorgeous yachts. So if you like, if you like all that sort of stuff, this would be my go-to spot. That really is. There's a fairy look. More boats. If you like boats. Yep. Okay, guys, that's that's enough of me rattling on. So there's an insight into Gansey. And um yeah. Book a holiday. That's um yeah. Okay, right then, guys. Right, I've got to go. I'd love to stay and keep talking about it, but there's only so much you can talk about. <laughs> All right, see you later, guys. More videos along the way. Please subscribe. Um, yeah, like I say, we're the next videos. Um, I've actually got some time off work, so I'll be doing a, a spot of surf casting, and I'm going to try and go for a chub. I haven't caught chub in years, so I'm going to try and target them throughout the winter. Um, my club fishery's got a stretch of um, the river, which has got a few in, and um, the otter doesn't seem to be able to, um, to catch him. So he's good at catching all the little roach and rud, but he's not very good at catching the chub. Um, so there you go. We'll give him a go. We'll see if we can get one for the camera. All right. I'll see you later, guys. Take care.